Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, to be considered for the Archer Huntington Award for my studies on numismatics as well as on commercial weights is a great honor and privilege for me. I am also aware of the responsibility of this award and it will definitely encourage me to work harder and to finish my ongoing projects in time. I really appreciate the Board of Trustees of the American Numismatic Society for this generous award. <coughs> if I am going to mention of myself of, or my studies a little bit, you will see that a significant number of my studies have been published jointly with my younger colleagues, especially Assange Turkey volumes. That is to say, Siloge Nomorum Graecorum. At the beginning, those who signed these works with me were younger colleagues who had just obtained their doctorate degrees, but now they all are independent researchers or <coughs> academics in the field of numismatics. So here, I also thank them for being always with me in this long journey. As you know, Anatolia, where modern Turkey is located, is a medium-sized country surrounded by sea on three sides. In antiquity, there were about 500 states or polis which minted coins in Anatolia. Surely not at the same time, <coughs> not simultaneously. So, the public museums or private collections in Turkey each owns thousands of coins. This makes millions of coins in total. This is one of the reasons why I am so enthusiastically carrying out the SNG Turkey project and publishing SNG Turkey volumes one by one with my younger colleagues. I would like to give you the good news that the SNG Turkey volumes is about to be transferred to a digital database platform in very near future. Thus, access to the material will be much easier. Nearly 10 or 12 years ago, I also initiated a new project titled Corpus Ponderum Antiquorum et Islamicorum, related to the commercial or balance weights from the Greek or Greco-Roman cities, beginning from the classical and Hellenistic periods through the end of the Ottoman period, that's to say, until the beginning of the 20th century. Balance weights were among the instruments of public spear, instrumentum publicum, of antiquity, and also one of the most important groups of antiquities worth studying for their unit marks, symbols, depictions, inscriptions, and ornaments. So, this means a full identification, a full description of them. However, balance weights have been among the most neglected artifacts within archaeological research when compared to other archaeological material. So, the aim of this Corpus Ponderum project is to document and to digitalize commercial weights originated in Anatolia. So, I visited many collections, public or private, in Turkey, as well as in the European countries, and here in USA. The Citrated Collection at Yale University. I collected, I mean, I documented many pieces and published them in Corpus Ponderum volumes or in articles from more than 20 collections and more than 1,000 pieces. And to draw attention to the field and to draw numismatists to Turkey, to Anatolia, we started to organize an international symposium or congress on numismatics a few years ago. The first one was in 2013 the second one in 2017, and the third one will be held in 2021, in two years. 
So it is organized in every four years. To create awareness for numismatics in Turkey, we started to organize a summer school program on numismatics and monetary history in 2017. This program, with 20 participants from Turkey and abroad, takes much interest. And I would like to thank ANS, or more specifically, to Peter van Alphen for his support to this program. Now I turn to my topic. I have prepared a presentation to show you the similarities, relations, and interactions of two public instruments, coins and weights, used in the marketplaces in the antiquity, but focusing on Anatolian geography, that is Asia Minor. My presentation is a short history of what I did for about the last 10 years in my career. Although I also planned to give a short information about marketplaces, Agorai, at the beginning. However, I excluded it since to be able to finish my presentation in time. Here are the essential public instruments used in an Agora. They are balances, weights, and coins. Steel yards, which is absent here, began to be used at the very end of the Hellenistic period, perhaps in the first century BC, since it was a late Republican invention. Consequently, since the introduction of the steel yard is a late phenomenon, there were no steel yards used in the agora of city-states during the Classical and Hellenistic periods. The term unit designates a given value in both coin and weight systems. As you see in the slide, there were two main unit groups for commercial transactions in the markets, Stater and Muna. Stater had two meanings. First, it equaled to a double mana in general, and it was used to weigh the heavy goods. Second, it was a coin check, check weight, and it was used to weigh the coins in precious metal. Mana was another unit, and it was used to weigh the non-heavy goods. Stater and mana both have subdivisions or fractions and multiplies. The slide shows commercial and coin check weights in a general table, main units and their multiplies and subdivisions, which we will encounter them in the following slides. Now, let's begin with the forms of the weights. The ancient Greek balance weights in general were squares in form. However, rectangular, cubical, disc-shaped, triangular, rhombic, hexagonal and octagonal forms were also used. In addition to these general forms, exceptional forms such as three-pointed star, truncated pyramid, stepped pyramid and astragalos also appear. The material used for the weights is essentially bronze, lead or stone. Bronze and stone retained their original weight better and longer than lead, but they were manufactured less and have survived only in few examples. One reason for their low number is that the weights in the markets were checked for their standard mass against bronze weights in the custody of market and weight controllers, agronomoi and metronomoi. Although they were not precise, Lead weights were produced more often, perhaps because they were cheaper. Therefore, the number of lead weights surviving from the classical and Hellenistic periods is incredibly higher, incredibly higher than the bronze weights. Bronze weights were the official standard weights mostly used to cross-check the balance weights of shopkeepers by officials. However, some of the bronze weights were not solid bronze, but rather lead-plated with bronze. 
The main unit of weight is the mana, which was adapted from the Near East and weighs about 500 grams. However, the mass of a mana varies from region to region or city to city. Also, the mass of the mana increased in time and reached over 600 grams. That is, one mana was made equal to two litra of Roman system at the end of the Hellenistic period and beginning of the imperial period. In the slide, in the first row, there are some lead weights with unit marks on them. Mana, Hemimonion, Tetarton, Hectamorion, Octon, and Tristateron, uh, respectively. In the second row, there are some examples of weights with symbols and unit marks. Mana, Hemimonion, Pentamorion, Tristateron, respectively. To the right, there are two weights. One belongs to Lysimachia and other belongs to Chios, as their ethnics indicate. They have symbols and ethnics, but no unit marks. Even so, it is easy to identify their units by weighing them. The weight or the mass of a weight gives its unit. However, Weights without a unit mark could always lead to a dispute between the shopkeeper, uh, let's say seller, and the customer. The symbols found on the commercial weights and coins are indeed a kind of sort of coat of arms for a city-state. This coat of arms used by the city as a symbol is called a parasemon, or parasema in plural form. In antiquity, the city-states had adopted some depictions as their symbols to represent themselves in the wider world. The symbols attested on the coins of a city-state or polis can also be found on its commercial weights and today we will see many examples in the following slides. In this slide, you see a bronze weight which bears three main elements placed on it, which makes its identification easy. They are civic badge, sorry, they are a uh, civic badge or parasemon, ethnic and unit mark or unit name. Let's look at the weight itself. In the middle, there is a tuna fish flanked by an ethnic Kuzi for Kuzikenon and a unit name Dista for Distateron. Consequently, this weight belongs to Kizikos on the southern shore of Sea of Marmara as the Parasemon and ethnic show. And its unit is a Distateron, that is a double stater. Therefore, one may say that the Parasemon is the most important clue, as well as the ethnic, to find out the origin of a weight. On the right are the major cities of Asia Minor that used parasema, that is a state badge or symbol, on their weights, and the provenance of the weights are identifiable through this parasema. Beside the ethnic and unit marks inscribed on the weights, there are other words or group of words attested. The most important of which is the word demosion, indicating that the weight was under the state guarantee, that is legal. This word is attested sometimes in full, such as demosion, or as demo, sometimes just a delta, or delta and epsilon, or delta and eta, the first letters of the word. Here you see delta and eta, which refers to demosion. The top right weight 
Bears letters delta and eta on its top left, behind the head of the eagle. Below, to right, there are two other examples. On the left one, there is a rectangular stump which shows Dionysus, the vine god, seated right on throne. with the word of metronomon around. It means that it was checked by the metronomos. The third example dates to the Roman imperial period. It remains out of this presentation in chronologically, but it is also a good example to show a controlled stamp. It is a circular stamp which bears a stack in center and the title and name of the agronomos around it. Here the stack and here the name of the Adronomos. <coughs> the shopkeepers kept their lead weights in their shops or at home, at their home. But what about the standard weights of Agronomoi? Surely they were kept in the office of Agronomoi when the Agronomoi are at work. However, it is known from the literal sources and inscriptions. The standard ways of the officials were kept as sets at the Tolos on the Acropolis in Athens, at Preus, and at Eleusis during the classical period. During the Roman Republican period, in the temples of Juno Moneta and Jupiter Capitolinus in Rome. During the Roman Imperial period, in the Sarapeion in Alexandria, in Egypt. But in the late antiquity, during the Byzantine period, in the greatest church of Alexandria. During the late Roman period, in the Granarium in Andreake, the port of Mura in Lycia. And also in mansions uh, or in stations, a kind of inn or horse changing stations, which were very active in the activities uh, of cursus publicus during the Roman imperial period. I tried to show the characteristics of the weights and their relationship with coins. Now, beginning with this slide, I want to show you some examples of weights and coins which bear a parasemon or a civic badge or a symbol on them in the steels of Asia Minor or its periphery. Let's begin with Tassos. Tassos Island is located in the north of the Aegean Sea. Very few weights of Tassos have survived. The lead weight seen in the slide is a hemimonion, that is a half mona, and depicts a bow and a club on its face. A bow, a, a club, and a bow. The ethnic at the bottom indicates the owner as Tasians of the people of Tassos. Within the bow is a small amphora motif. And just above the ethnic is the letter phi, most likely to be the initial of the owner's name, if not something else. This design on this weight is also known from the city's Hellenistic Bronze Coinage. Therefore, it seems that there is a parallelism between the weights and coins in terms of designs, at least for a certain period of time. We know that the supreme god in Tassos was Dionysus. But beside Dionysus, the god of wine, Heracles was also a popular figure in Tassos. Heracles' temple was located close to the Agora, in the lower city. Depiction of the bow and club of Heracles on the weights and on the coins of Tassos is a direct reference to Hercules. Maranea is located on the foot of Mount Ismaros on the northern Aegean coast in Southern Trace. The weights of Maranea have the depiction of a wheel with four spokes and the first four letters, Maro, of the ethnic, placed, placed in the fields of the spokes. The similar design occurs on the Athenian weights 
found in the Agora excavations in Athens. But this time, it reads demo instead of ethnic. Here is demo, but here is maro. Demo, among the spokes, refers to demosion, that is, state guarantee. However, this composition or design on Maranean weights is not attested on the coinage of the city, so it seems peculiar only to its weights. Ainos, modern NS, a northern agency, was founded at the mouth of Hebrew River, today marriage, by Aeolians in the 7th century BC. Only two bronze weights are known to date. One is in an auction ca catalog, while the other is kept at Edirne Archaeological Museum. The weight in auction catalog weighs about 128 grams, while the one in Edirne Museum weighs about 121 grams in mass. They are similar in appearance in terms of face composition. Both have a hanging loop on top. Both weights have the depiction of Hermes Perferaios on throne, which is uh, under, under which is a letter P with one leg shorter, both in relief. Reverses of these weights are blank. Although not certain, it is likely that both weights were produced from the same mold. The Cult statue representing Hermes Perferaios on both weights stands on a throne with a back and arm rests. This is a parsimon of Ainos, as attested on the reverses of silver coins uh, of the city from the 5th, 4th centuries BC, and as a symbol on the reverses of tetradrams minted in the name of Lysimachus in the first quarter of the 3rd century BC and of Ptolemy III in the latter half of the 3rd century BC. Here you see the uh, Hermes Perforios uh, standing on throne, and here is a coin of Lysomachus, and here you see the uh, symbol of uh, Hermes, and here is another one. Hermes on throne is a quite similar figure to those on the coins. The throne was usually depicted in profile on the coins of the 5th and 4th century BC, whereas facing on the coins of Lysimachus and Ptolemy. The throne on the Aeneian weights is depicted facing as on the Hellenistic coins of Ainos. Thus, we may date these two weights to the Hellenistic period as well. As understood from the coins, Hermes was the chief deity of Ainos. The letter on both weights of Ainos is the initial of the unit name Pemtaion, one-fifth, indicating that they are fifth mana. Lysumahia, modern Bolayr, is a Hellenistic city located on the Kersonesus, modern Gelibolu Peninsula, projecting into the Aegean from Trace. The city was founded by Lysumahus about 309 BC and named after himself. Lysumachus settled the people of neighboring towns, particularly Cardia, at his new capital city. Lysumachian weights are basically square in shape and easy to identify because they have the line figure, the city's parasemon, and abbreviation of the city's ethnic of the people of Lysumachia. On big units, such as Mana and its multiplies, the line is depicted in full. Whereas on smaller units, such as Hemimonaion and Tetarton, it is a proton. Line is both the city's parasemon and the symbol of King Lysumahus, and it was copied from the coins of Cardia, as you see in this slide. The line figure on the single bronze weight uh, to the right crushes leftwards and breaks a spear held in its mouth. It is also known from the coins of Cardia. Please look at the bronze coin at bottom right. We know that the people of Cardia was transferred to the newly founded city of Lysumachia. However, 
it was not only the people transferred, but also the type of crossing line was transferred to the newly founded city of Lysimachia. Founded as a colony of Samos, Byzante is located in the barbarous area of Tekirda on the northern shore of the Marmara Sea. The only known extant weight from Byzante is of lead and square in shape. It is decorated with a catechus and monogram like legend P and Omicron or Po above. Here is. That is an Omicron within P. On the left are some traces, but um, it is uh, unvisible. The Po refers to Poleos, which means of the city or belonging to the city. It is similar to Demosion. Byzantium, modern Istanbul, was founded as a Megarian colony about mid 7th century BC on the Thracian coast of the Bosphorus. The main type for Byzantium weights, Byzantium weights is a dolphin. The main type is a dolphin. The fifth or fourth century silver coins also bear a call on a dolphin. The letters P above both on weights and on coins are the abbreviation of the city's ethnic. Here, here, here and here. The first letter is the beta of the Corinthian alphabet and was used in the Megarian alphabet as well. In fact, there should be a small line connected to the left bar of the P, but on the weights it is omit omitted and uh, it is missing, whereas it is clear on the coins. You see the it is here is the Corinthian beta with a short line uh, to the uh, bar and but here on the weights uh, we don't see this uh, bar. As Bi Byzantium was a colony of Megara, this letter was taken from there. The Corinthian beta is seen on the coins of Byzantium struck from the end of the 5th century to the 3rd century BC. Normal beta came into use in Byzantium at the end of the 3rd century or more likely in the 2nd century BC. So the weights with Corinthian beta, as you see in this slide, may be dated to the 3rd century BC. As also known from the coins, the dolphin and cow were the parasema or civic beds of Byzantium. I want to draw your attention to the weight on the bottom left. Here. A cow proton a coproton occurs on an octoon, but it may also be a deformed gamma resembling a coproton head and neck facing right. Then it would be the second letter of the unit name octoon, that is gamma inscribed from right to left. Og. Instead, I prefer to call this gamma like object as a proton of a cove. Kizikus is located on the southern shore of Sea of Marmara. The biggest number of weights with ethnic on them belong to Kizikos. Most of the extant Kuzikene weights are of lead and square or almost square in shape. Most of them have the symbol abbreviated ethnic Kuzi and unit mark and so they are easy to be identified. A small number of the Kuzikene weights are of bronze. Depictions in relief on the weights include tuni, dolphin, torch, and catechus. You see a tuni, uh, here a torch, and torch, and a tuni, and a catechus, or uh, catechio. These, uh, these two motifs, uh, especially tuni and torch, are frequently encountered as coin types of Kizikos and are the city's parasema. It should be underlined that the dolphin is also important type for the Kizikene weights. Lampsacus. 
Lapsakos, uh, modern Lapseki, is located on the Asian side of Hellespontos Mount, opening into the Marmara Sea. Known weights of Lapsakos are of lead and are square or triangular in shape. They have the depiction of the city's Parasemon, the winged horse with bird's tail in relief. On the first way to left, there is an H or uh, Eta uh, beneath the creature, which refers to Hemimonion, while on the second way to right is a T or Tau beneath the creature, uh, refers to a Tetarton. The 4th and 3rd century silver coins, as well as some bronze coins dated to the Hellenistic and Imperial periods, also bear a winged horse with tail. So one may easily claim that winged horse with tail has a long past in the history of Lampsacus, as coins and weights show. Abydos, or modern Eidos Nara Burnu, is located on a promontory projected into the Hellespontos. Extant weights of Abydos are of lead and usually rectangular or square in shape. Weights bear an eagle figure uh, in relief. The example in slide is a tetarton in unit and bears an eagle and the initial letters of ethnic, Abu. Here you see alpha, beta and y, Abu. Uh, for Abu Denon. This tetarton weighs about 132 grams and indicates a mina of 531 grams. Alexandria Troas is an ancient city state located at a strategic location where the agency connects Hellespontos to reach the Black Sea via the Marmara Sea. The weights of Alexandria Troas are easy to recognize. The abbreviation of the ethnic together with the horse figure are characteristic. The horse is the city's parasemon. On the coins of the city, when it was a Roman colony, was uh, the legend indicating its colony status, such as Col Autro, as you see here, Col Autro, or, Troa, or variations. On the coins preceding the colonial period was a legend Alexandreion, identifying the city or rather the ethnic. Extant weights of the city have the abbreviation Ale and should be dated to the period before the colonial status. Here uh, there are <laughs> two examples, lead examples, and a horse figure uh, standing to right and above uh, the ethnic uh, which alpha, lambda, and uh, epsilon, ale, you, you see they are before the colonization, Roman colony period. So uh, they should be dated to the period before the colonial status, although this is not certain uh, all the time. Skepsis, a city of Troas, is localized, uh, localized at the Kurshunno Tepe area today. Just one weight is known from Skepsis. It says it is square in shape and of lead. It is decorated uh, with a six branch firti in relief and the abbreviation of the ethnic in the bottom left and right corners. Here you see. Okay. This example weighs 194 grams, although its unit is not marked on. It may be a tritemorion, one third of a mana. On the reverses of the silver and bron co bronze coins uh, minted by Skepsis in the classical and uh, Hellenistic uh, periods is also a six branch uh, fir tree. This shows that the fir tree was the parasemon of Skepsis. The example given in slide has a high mana value, which leads to a date in the late Hellenistic period, perhaps second century, early first century BC. Murina was a coastal town of Aeolis in the northwest of Anatolia. Extant ways of Murina are of lead and square or rectangular in shape. All of them bear the volute crater, the city's parasemon. Almost all weights, all the weights have the first two letters 
mu and uh, mu and epsilon of the ethnic flanking the volute crater. The same parsimon or symbol that is uh, crater appears on the coins of Murina during the classical and Hellenistic periods, sometimes as a full depiction, sometimes at the feet of Apollo. The example in this slide is a trimonion, as the letter gamma to the left field shows here, you see. Chume is the most important city of Iolis, located between the rivers of Hermos and Kaikos to the north of Izmir. The weights of Chume are quite ra rare. About a dozen lead weight square uh, in shape have survived. Apart from a few, they have the first two letters, Kappa and Epsilon, of cities ethnic. Weights of Chume bear a weight with a single handle as Parasemon. Silver and bronze coins of the city, dated to the Hellenistic period, feature the vase with a single handle, sometimes full figure, sometimes before or under a horse, and sometimes as a symbol in the field. You see uh, here the vase on the coins. Therefore, the vase with a single handle is attested as the parasimon of Chume. Chios is one of the largest islands of the Aegean. It is part of Greece today. Square-shaped keen weights of lead are few in number. The main depiction on the weights is either a sphinx or an amphora, the city's parasema. The sphinx is depicted sometimes alone, sometimes seated on an amphora. On an amphora. Amphoras are also depicted sometimes on their own on the keen weights. In the slide, there are three examples. Hemimonion, Hemitriton, and Muna, respectively. The top one bears an amphora. And the city name, Chios. The second example below left, bears a sphinx seated on amphora, this one. And it is a hemitriton as the inscription to left and right indicates hemi tree. The third one below, below right, bears again a sphinx on amphora and unit name Muna. You see here. To left. Amphora and sphinx are also appear on the coins of the city during the classical and Hellenistic periods. Colophon, modern Dermendere, about 40 kilometers northeast of Ephesus, was one of the 12 Ionian cities. Extant weights of Colophon are square in form and of lead. Since they generally don't bear an ethnic, it is sometimes difficult to attribute them to Colophon, but the parasimon and place of finding are important criteria in addition to the standard employed. It should be noted that the form of the lyre on the Californian weights is, is different from the ones on the coins of the city. The three examples in this slide are Hemimanaya, as the abbreviation of unit mark eta and mu indicate. The one at the bottom right is a tetarton, as its unit mark tau and uh, epsilon indicates. Since lyre is the main type for coins and weights, one may easily claim that it was the parasemon of or civic badge of the city. Ephesus, one of the most important cities, uh, city states of Ionia, Ionia is Ephesus, located in the Kaistros Delta. Extant weights of Ephesus are of lead and basically square or rectangular in shape. The weights mainly have the B as the parasimon of the city. First and second weights uh, bear uh, B as well as unit marks, mu for mana and eta for hemimonion respectively. But the third one at the bottom is a weight of Gantinos, a city in Troas. 
Gantinos also uses B on its coins and weights. So the attribution of the weights of Ephesus and Gantinos is sometimes mistakable. But the gamma on the top left refers the initial letter of Gantinos. B and stack are the parasema of Ephesus as they frequently occur on coins and ways of Ephesus. Clazomenae is located on the western court of Ionia and member of Ionian League. There are two extant examples of the vase of Clazomenae. Both are in the same private collection. They are unique. I don't know whether there are other examples in the collections. Both are of bronze. Most probably they are of lead plated with copper alloy. As it is known from the coins, the parasema or constant types of clazomenae are the winged boar, swan and ram. Although the winged boar appears in the 5th century BC silver coins, it also appears in the late Hellenistic bronze coins of clazomenae. The first weight weighs about 80 grams and bears a winged boar and the abbreviated form of the ethnic Kla, Klazomenion, above the winged boar. Or on the bottom left is an, is an epsilon, which refers to Hectamorion, that is one sixth mana. If we multiply its mass by 6, we get about 483 grams, which gives us the mana value. This figure shows that it may be dated to the Hellenistic period. The posthumous Alexanders minted in Clazomenae uh, are of Attic standard. So the first weight may indicate a 110 or 112 standard of Attic drum if we multiply uh, its uh, weight with the standard. The second phase is about 44 grams and the depiction is not so clear to identify it as a winged boar, but it may discreetly be claimed that it is highly, is, it is, uh, highly likely to be a winged boar. To the left is demo. To the left is demo which stands for demosion, and on the top right is a delta, which may refer to deca, for the unit mark of decadram. Both weights date to the Hellenistic period. Pyrene, a city in Ionia, has never been on the front stage of history. The tribute it paid to the Delian League was also very low. However, Archaeological excavations have brought to light a city with a well-planned grid layout. Only a few weights of Pyrene have survived. In the slide, you see three of them. Two examples on the left are Dimonion and Mna, respectively. While the pyramidal one on the right is a Tetarton. All have ethnics of Pirie or Pirene, as well as unit marks as D and Muna, respectively. The last one be only the full ethnic, approximately full ethnic, of the people of Pirene. The trident is a parasemon of Pirene used both on its coins and weights. Miletos. The history of Miletos, modern Balat village, probably dates back to the beginning of the first millennium BC. Extant weights of Miletos are of lead and triangular or square in shape. Some were found during the excavations at Miletos. Milesian weights have the first few letters of the city's ethnic in the form of a monogram. The monogram Mu and Yota is found frequently on the coins of the 4th century BC and particularly in the Hellenistic period. Silver coins minted in the name of Alexander the Great, the Great and carrying the monogram of Mu and Yota are thus attributed to Miletos. Apart from uh, the usual examples known as, I want to draw attention to an interesting bronze weight. 
This rate bears a large monogram of a mu and yota as well as a b a bow, if not just a fly, and a punched in inscription on the edge to left and right. To be sure that the b is only a motif or it symbolizes the city of Ephesus is difficult. In other words, maybe suggest that this rate shows an economic alliance between Miletus and Ephesus and therefore was used by Bostis? Did the bee have a separate role in the history of Miletus? Coexistence of symbols belonging to the two cities, Miletus and Ephesus, on one weight may indicate that it was used in Bostis or to be more accurate, its weight, mass, was valid or convertible for the markets of both these. This might point to a commercial partnership or treaty between these two cities. Later, a piece of lead, this one, was added to adjust, to raise its weight. It may point to a rise in the standard. It is a hemimonion, but its but its mana equivalent is a mana of 541 grams. So it may be dated to the third, second century BC or later. But the most interesting is the inscription punched on it. It reads Iera Apol Didum which may refer that it was dedicated to the sacred sanctuary of Apollo or was belonged to the sacred sanctuary of Apollo. We know the relationship between the Vedas and sacred places or temples from the literary sources. The public Vedas were kept in sacred places or dedicated to the temples. This Ved is a good example to show the relationship between the Vedas and sacred places or deities. Didyuma, located about 11 miles south of Miletus, was an ancient sanctuary and was connected with Miletus by the so-called sacred way. Therefore, the relationship between the present weight with the punctured inscription referring to Apollo Didymaius or Didymaion is quite understandable. Rhodos is the largest island in the Dodecanese archipelago. The weights of Rhodos with cities Parasemon are very rare, and perhaps only a few examples survived. The first example to left is from an auction. This one, the middle one. It is square in form with concave edges and of bronze. It weighs 101 grams. On the obverse is a rose, rose design, as it appears on Rhodian coinage. Especially during the Hellenistic period, under the rose is a large T or tau, which stands for unit mark tetarton. Now I want to mention of Grineum. Grineum, a port city in Aeolis. It was one of the 11 Aeolian cities, according to Herodotus. Grineum struck silver and bronze coins in the 4th and 3rd centuries BC, and maybe it may be extended to the early 2nd century BC. Both silver and bronze coins from Grineum bear a head of Apollo on the obverse and a bivalve, a shell, on the reverse. Only two years ago, some people found the weight I'm going to introduce here during their visit the site with a detector. Fortunately, this weight is now being kept in a private collector in uh, Turkey. It is a square weight in form and there is a bivalve on face. Above it reads Gür. As you see. For Gruneum. And below it reads Sita for Stater. 
The unit mark uh, is stater. It weighs 931 grams. The unit is stater equivalent to double bana. The bivalve depicted on the reverse of the coins and on the weights is indeed the pinna nobilis. That is a giant muscle, not one of the ordinary muscles which are served in buckets as at restaurants today. <laughs> on the seabed of Grineum, there are many pinna standing upright. They are still found on the shores of Grineum and consumed by the locals. The pinna grows straight up out of the mud, anchored by its byssus. The shell can grow up to size of uh, 1 meter and 20 centimeter and reach the age of 20 years in a habitat with good lighting, clean water and moderate temperatures. Pinna are plankton feeders, which filter about six liters of water every hour. As a helm aphrodite, it produces male and female gam cells, which are alternately released into the water from June to August. Plutarch and Cicero tell us what a, uh, that a crab or a small necton live inside the pinna. This allows the pinna to remain wide open until a small fish enters. Then the crab bites the flesh of the pinna as a signal to close its shell and slips inside. The shell closes and together the pinna and crab feast on the imprisoned prey. Pliny speaks of the medicinal properties of oysters, which is to be understood as a general term for bivalves. Two years ago, a group of underwater archaeologists dived into the sea offshore of Gurneum and shot a video of the Pinna nobilis bivalves. So the bivalves on the coins, I don't know I will be able uh, Sorry, there's a video here, but I don't know how to work it. Okay, okay, it's, a, uh, it's a not so important. Uh, so, the B valves uh, on the coins and vase of Grineum are not ordinary muscles, but pinna nobilis, that is to say, a uh, giant, giant muscles. Late second century AD, sorry, late uh, second century uh, BC, is a milestone for the history of Asia Minor. Romans transformed the territories of the Pergamum Kingdom to a Roman province, Provincia Asia. From that time onwards, police in the Western Asia Minor began to employ the Roman system based on Libra besides the Greek system based on Mala. So, perhaps two centuries, both systems were employed simultaneously. While the theoretical weight of Mala was about 500 grams, the theoretical weight of Libra was about 324 grams. So, in time, especially in late Hellenistic period, that is late second and first centuries, Mana equivalent to two libra. Thus, one mana weighed about 600 grams or more. Then the standard would increase further. So this slide shows us the change of system from mana to libra and shows the situation when the two systems drive simultaneously. Toroid is a Cusicana weight in Roman system. A libra from British Museum. On the face is a helm flanked by lay for litra and Cusi for Cusicano. This weight was produced in Cusicos, but uh, in the late Hellenistic period or at the beginning of the imperial period, and it is uh, in the Roman system. Now the last slide. 
Now, I want to show you a similar lead weight found with a male skeleton, age 25 or uh, 35, in a grave in the Kalebayur necropolis area during a salvage excavation carried out by the Directorate of Bandırma Museum in Turkey only two years ago. As it is seen in the slide, the weight in question was found in a grave and it was placed under the left forearm of the skeleton. It is almost similar to the one in the previous slide. Now you see it uh, on the bottom right uh, again. The weight is square in form with rounded corners of lead and weighs 1080 grams. On the obverse is a figure of Ham flanked by Chuzi and Mana. The reverse is blank. Ham figure on Chuzikene weights is seen rarely and the most close parallel as visual composition is a litra in the British Museum. To me, the weight presented here from Kalebeir Necropolis is a Mana, a kill to two litra agoraya in Roman system. Because in the Roman system, there are two standards, uh, Libra uh, Italique and Libra Agoraya. And Libra Agoraya is weighter than the uh, Libra uh, Italique. And it may be dated to the second century AD. It is convincing that the grave owner was an officer uh, inspecting the market that is Agoronomos. But the fact that the weight is of lead rather than bronze may indicate that the grave owner was a shopkeeper because officers used mainly standard bronze weights. With this slide, I have come to the end of my presentation. I tried to draw attention to the relation between coins and waste as well as to the common characteristic features, uh, designs, ethnics, units, symbols, etc., between them, and to draw attention to the importance of commercial weights. Here uh, you see uh, some remarks. Uh, let's read them. Uh, coins and weights are important public instruments used in the markets in antiquity. Coins and weights have common features such as symbols, unit marks, ethnics. Weight standards are based on the, tot uh, on the total masses of coins they contain. Although coins are minted, weights are cast. Weights are of lead and of bronze, whereas coins are, pre or of, are of precious metals such as electrum, gold, silver, and bronze. Surely, this is because coins have their intrinsic, intrinsic values uh, for bronze face value. Uh, weights do not bear any uh, intrinsic value. Uh, their function is only to weigh uh, the, uh, com uh, the commodities or to check the weights of the precious uh, coins. For the weights in Greek or greco roman uh, world, there were two systems, Greek and Roman. In Greek system, Muna was the main standard. In Roman system, Libra or Litra was the main standard. During the greco roman period, say the Greek cities uh, under the Roman Empire, let's say uh, during the first few centuries, both systems were employed simultaneously. We have examples that on one phase it gives Muna value, while the other phase gives Litra value. Thank you for listening to me.